Hello, everyone. My name is Ye Teng Cao. I'm from Beijing Institute of Technology. Today, I will introduce the latest work of our group, RISPP, continuous wrist PPG based blood pressure measurement. This is a joint work with Dr. Hui Jie Chen from Beijing University of Technology, Professor Fan Li from Beijing Institute of Technology, and Professor Yu Wang from Temple University. Blood is constantly circulating in our body, keeping us alive. In some people, the pressure in blood vessels remains too high. This condition is called hypertension. It has become a global health issue affecting one in five people, and many don't know that they have it because hypertension rarely has symptoms. So it is also known as the silent killer. Over time, hypertension can damage the blood vessels and organs causing serious problems. Blood pressure is the key signal in the prevention and diagnosis of hypertension. Traditionally, people use arm cuffs or similar devices to compress blood vessels and measure blood pressure. Also providing accurate measurements, these methods only monitor arterial blood pressure at discrete times. Besides, researchers have explored the close correlation between blood pressure and pulse wave velocity. These solutions measure two pulse waves simultaneously from two positions and calculate the blood pressure using a linear function. But users are still burdened due to the necessary user effort. In this work, they propose CRISPP. It is a novel blood pressure monitoring system leveraging the PPG sensor available in commercial wrist worn devices. It has advantages including low cost, comfortable, convenient, and supports long term monitoring. The GIF on the right describes the process that with forward blood flow and backward blood flow successively induce volume changes in the artery. The basic idea is to characterize transit time between the forward blood flow and the backward blood flow at the same position, which has a strong correlation with blood pressure. Despite this simple idea, three major challenges underline the design. First, the collected PPG data are inevitably interfered by volume changes in the superficial capillary bed, which causes errors in RWTT estimates. Therefore, the first challenge is to obtain clean arterial pulse. Besides, PPG waveform is highly sensitive to the contact pressure between the sensor and human skin, making it extremely hard to extract reliable PPG data for arterial blood pressure monitoring. The second challenge is to address contact pressure artifact. Moreover, individual differences also affect the collective data. An accurate and user-independent arterial blood pressure monitoring system is needed, which leads to the third challenge. Before presenting the system design, I will first introduce some basics. PPG is an optical technique that detects blood volume changes. The second derivative of PPG is called APG. It is a popular technique for pulse wave analysis and conveys change in acceleration of blood volume in the artery. We use the APG signal to measure RWTT instead of the original PPG signal as shown in the figure. 
Then I will introduce the detailed system design. RISBP includes four parts, two wavelengths light sensing, device state identification, arterial pulse profiling, and continuous arterial blood pressure monitoring. In two wavelengths light sensing, we obtain green and infrared PPG data. This combination is widely adopted by many commercial smartwatches. Throughout the whole process, the challenges are addressed, which is the main contribution of this paper. Next, I will introduce different modules in our system. Let's first see the device state identification. As mentioned before, to obtain reliable PPG data, it is very important to maintain an appropriate pressure between the PPG sensor and the skin. We first estimate the contact pressure. We extract two unique features from the PPG data, which are related to vascular elasticity and vascular resistance. Then we use the latest squares for vector machine to learn the mapping between the extracted features and contact pressure values. For common users, they can't tell if the sensor is applying proper pressure to the skin based on the pressure value. Thus, we perform contact pressure qualification. First, a calibration procedure is introduced. We ask users to slowly press then slowly release the device and the pressure value associated with the highest amplitude of the alternating component is identified as the optimal contact pressure. Finally, we get the user to touch or lose the wristband according to the relationship between the current pressure and the optimal contact pressure. Now we introduced arterial pulse profiling. We first remove noise in PPG data using the Butworth filter and the percentage change method. Then we extract arterial pulse. Infrared light can reach the arteries in the subcutaneous tissue, so the infrared PPG carries a complex result of concurrent pulses of capillary and arterial. Green light can reach the superficial capillaries, so the green PPG carries capillary pulses. In view of this, we associate the wavelength-dependent PPG with skin vasculatures to extract plain arterial pulse. Specifically, we model the reflected optical density of PPG data using the modified Beer-Lambert law as shown in the formula. And the reflected optical density of infrared PPG and green PPG can be expressed by the formulas. Through mathematical analysis, arterial volume change 3C2 can be extracted by finding a subrange of beta where 3C2 dominates this formula. After extracting the arterial pulse, we calculate RWTT and turn to the problem of estimating arterial blood pressure. We design a bidirectional long short term memory based hybrid neural network to enable user independent arterial blood pressure monitoring. The core of the network consists of two bidirectional LSTM layers a personal information calibrate layer, and two fully connected layers. Besides RWTT, we select six features as shown in the table. Although the network supports user-independent monitoring, 
it requires a large amount of training data collected from different gender and age. To relieve the pain of data collection, we propose to use the transfer learning technique to boost the system. We first use fingertip PPG data and blood pressure data from an online dataset to train a well-performing model. Then we use the learned weights and bias to initialize a new network. The figure shows the improved structure of the network. We add an adaptation layer after each fully connected layer to perform transfer learning. After that, we obtain the final network by fine tuning weights of the fully connected layers. To evaluate CRISPR-P, we implemented with a proof of concept prototype as shown in the red. We recruit 35 participants to collect PPG signals with the prototype, and the ground truth of arterial blood pressure is provided by an FDA approved arm cop monitor. We conduct several experiments that will be described later. Three measurements, including mean error, standard deviation of mean error, and sample Pearson's correlation coefficient, are used to measure the accuracy of the proposed method. We conduct leave one participant odd validation to evaluate the overall performance of CRISPR-P. These figures show the blend Altman plots for the estimated diastolic blood pressure and systolic blood pressure. The mean errors of diastolic blood pressure and systolic blood pressure are 0.86 mm of mercury and 1.67 mm of mercury. The standard deviation of mean error of diastolic blood pressure and systolic blood pressure are 6.55 mm of mercury and 7.31 mm of mercury. This figure shows the correlation diagram of the estimated results and the reference value. The Pearson's correlation coefficients for diastolic blood pressure and systolic blood pressure are 0.88 and 0.82 respectively. These results confirm that CRISPR-P is accurate for either independent arterial blood pressure monitoring. These two tables compare CRISPR-P with international medical standards and demonstrate that our system is within their ranges. Compared to typical works on portable arterial blood pressure monitoring, CRISPR-P has advantages including comfort and convenience. CRISPR-P can work during both daytime and night without any additional sensors or tools. We also conduct a 24-hour experiment to evaluate CRISPR-P. Data are recorded every 30 minutes during the day and every hour at night. The estimation errors of diastolic blood pressure and systolic blood pressure fluctuate below 3.2 mm of mercury, which confirms the effectiveness of CRISPR-P. In conclusion, we propose an effective system to monitor arterial blood pressure. We design a set of techniques to ensure accurate arterial blood pressure measurements, and the evaluation results are very promising. If you want to learn more about this work, you can scan the QR code. It links to the paper. That's all. Thanks for listening.